Good morning, afternoon, or evening. How y'all doing today? Welcome back to Mr. Morrow's Algebra class. Today we are going to wrap up uh, factoring polynomials. Okay, this is a very exciting day. After this, you will hopefully be masters of factoring just about any polynomial. Three terms, two terms, four terms. After this, we're going to apply this in quadratic functions. So please do not just forget about this. This is not a subject to just forget about. This is going to be used, I promise, next chapter and also next year and also in junior year and probably also in senior year and probably your first year of college. So it's going to be there forever. For at least not forever, but for the next few years of your mathematical careers. So today, we're wrapping everything up, and we're just going to, I'm going to show you general skills on how to tackle a factoring problem. What do I do step by step? How do I approach each polynomial that I am given? Well, for factoring strategies, the first thing you want to do always, 100% of the time, always, 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 factor out any GCF. That is the first and foremost step. It is super important. Factor any GCF first. Now, after that, you're going to be left with either two terms, three terms, four terms. More than four terms, you will learn how to do that using the rational roots theorem in Algebra 2. Okay, so there are larger polynomials, but we're not going to do that yet. You will do that in Algebra 2. So if you're left with two terms, please remember that's a binomial. And it's either going to be a difference of squares or a sum of squares. If it's a difference of squares, that means that you have x squared minus y squared. That's going to equal square root of the first plus square root of the second times square root of the first minus square root of the second. If you have a sum of squares, that's prime. Okay? So that's the, those are the only two possibilities you're going to have. Either you factor out a GCF and now you can have a difference of squares, or it's a sum of squares, or it's just not factorable. Those are the only, only choices you're going to have with two terms. Three terms. Okay, you can factor the trinomial into two binomials. Maybe the trinomial they give you is a perfect squared trinomial, and then you know how to do that. Maybe it's a trinomial in the form of x squared plus bx plus c, where you ask what times what is c, but when added together is b and your setup is x and x. Maybe they give you the form of ax squared plus bx plus c, where your setup is ax and ax. You multiply a times c to find a new c, and then you ask yourself, what times what is the new c? But when added together is the b, and then you must imaginary factor. Please don't forget that. So those are the three types of uh, trinomials you can get. Perfect square trinomial, regular x squared plus bx plus c trinomial, regular ax squared plus bx plus c trinomial, or you can get a trinomial that's not factorable at all. Okay? Um, four terms. Factor by grouping. You create one common binomial. Okay? You're going to be given four terms. You group Using parentheses, you group two terms together, you group the other two terms together, okay? And then you're going to factor out the common binomial that you created. And then the other factor will be the leftovers together in one binomial. This is how you factor, always, every time, no matter what you're given. These are the steps you follow. So let's practice. Okay, number one, first things first, what is the first thing I want to do immediately, right now, immediately? Thank you, factor out of GCF. So I've got a 2, and I've got x squared minus 2x minus 24. Now I'm left with a trinomial. Just looking at this, is this even remotely possibly going to be a perfect square trinomial? Yes. Okay, some people say yes, some people say no. How can it be a perfect square trinomial if 24 is not a perfect square? 
How can that happen? It can't, right, guys? So again, we're going to ask this again. Is this remotely possible to be a perfect square trinomial? No. Okay, so it's a regular trinomial. We know how to factor that. It's x squared, so we put an x and an x. What times what is c? But when added together is b. What times what is negative 24? But when added together is negative 2. Which one's negative? Which one's positive, guys? Negative 6, positive 4. Very good. Done. Bye-bye. Have a good day. Factored out my GCF, then I factored out the trinomial I was left with. Excellent. Okay, number 2. I've got two terms. Can I factor out a GCF from that? No, but I've got two terms. So does this meet the criteria for a difference of squares? Yeah, that's a perfect square. The square root of that is 5x. That's a perfect square. The square root of that is 3y squared. So if you remember difference of squares, because it's subtracting two perfect squares, it's the square root of the first plus the square root of the second times the square root of the first minus the square root of the second. Does that make sense, everybody? Done. Next, can I factor out a GCF from this uh, cubic four-term polynomial? What GCF can I factor out of here immediately? A 2. Very good, gentlemen. Very good. So I've got 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 18x plus 27. Now, I've got four terms. So I'm going to use the, the grouping method. Thank you. I drop down this 2 because that is a GCF. I have to. Now, I group these guys. What can I factor out of this first group of 2x squared minus 3x squared? I can factor out an x squared, right? Well, no, I did that wrong. This is x cubed, sorry. But I am going to factor out an x squared, leaving me with 2x minus 3. Does everyone see what I did there? What must I factor out of here to get a positive 2x minus 3? A negative 9. Fantastic. Thank you so much. So now that's 2x minus 3. Excellent. Because remember, you want to make it look exactly identical to this guy, okay? You with me here, boys? You rule. Okay, now, this is 2 times, what's the common binomial? 2x minus 3. And what are my leftovers? x squared minus 9. But wait a second. Can anyone tell me something about this x squared minus 9? That's a difference of squares. So this final answer will be 2 times 2x plus 3 times x plus 3 times x minus 3. Because that is how you factor x squared minus 9. Yes, sir? Come again? 2x minus 3. Yes, I said minus and I wrote plus. Thank you for caring. Thank you for watching my back. Thank you. Thank you very much. Excellent. So that makes sense, boys. So it's not done until it's done. Okay, guys? Sometimes you have to do, like I said, multiple things. Here you had to factor a GCF. Then you had to group. Then you had the difference of squares. If you know how to do it, though, it's very simple. Hi, right, number four. Can I factor anything out of here? What do I want to factor out? No, not a 4. No? Negative. Do I ever want a negative in the front? No. So I'm going to factor out a negative 4x. And that's going to leave me with y squared. No, not plus. Minus y. Minus 3. Very good. Now, is this trinomial, is that a, a perfect square trinomial? So let's factor it normally. What's my setup here? Have I got a y squared? Y and what times what is negative 3, but when added together is negative 1? Nothing, guys. What are our choices? 3 and 1, right? 
How can 3 plus 1 or 3 minus 1 ever equal negative 1? Can it? No. So, this goes bye-bye. And what you have is just straight up minus uh, y minus 3. And that's it. You're done. You cannot go any further. Does that make sense, gentlemen? Okay, let us continue, please. Let's put it all together one more time. I want to repeat this, as you can see, because it's important. I want to make sure you know this. Whenever you are factor, it's basically the same thing that I had on the first slide, but more detailed. Whenever you are asked to factor, remember the following strategies. Always factor out a GCF if possible. If you have four terms left, factor by grouping if possible. If you have three terms left, identify any perfect square trinomials. If none, factor normally. If you have two terms left, identify any difference of squares or sum of squares and factor if possible. So it's exactly the same thing. I mean, exactly. Just a little bit more detailed. I see people writing... So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split the screen so we can, you can write what you need to write, and then we can also work on some stuff, if, if that's fair, okay? So for this first one, I've got 4Q minus 10Q cubed plus 16Q squared minus 40Q. What's the first thing I always check for? What can I factor out? Very good. 2Q. And that's going to give me 2Q cubed. Say that five times quickly. Minus 5Q squared plus 8Q minus 20. Does that make sense? I'll take that as a yes. And then yes, you're absolutely right, my brother. Group it. Absolutely. Good job. So there, there. Take that inside, boom. What can I factor out of that bad boy? Okay, so I have my 2Q from the beginning. Then I can factor out a 2... A, no, not a 2Q. Q squared alone, yes. So Q squared. I'm left with a Q minus 5. My friends, what must I take out of here to get a Q... Oh, wait a second. It, wow, I'm completely, hold on, thank you, I was testing you guys, and you guys passed, no, I'm kidding, I'm, 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 I'm not paying attention, and that's wrong, I apologize, no excuse, 2Q minus 5, why did I leave it out, because I wasn't paying attention, okay, what do I have to do to 8Q minus 20 to look like 2Q minus 5, factor out a, no, not a negative 4, just a positive 4. Because I already have an 8Q, it's positive, and 20 is positive. So I'm left with 2Q minus 5. So in the end, I'll do it in a third color, in a red color. My final answer, 2Q times 2Q minus 5. That's my common binomial. Times Q squared plus 4. Can I factor the, two squ the, the Q squared plus 4? No, I cannot. That is a sum of squares, and that is prime. I see you guys were testing me. Good job. Good job. Does that make sense, my brothers, what I just did here? Everybody understands this. May I make this a full screen now? Thank you. For those of you that were writing him again, thank you so much. All right. So now... Let's do this guy. I already have a 2 out here. Can I take anything else out? What? A 3. So when I pull out a 3, guys... Give me one second. All right, guys. So we have a 2 out here already, and my GCF is... You said it. You said it perfectly. 3x. But what's 3x times 2? 
So there's going to be a 6x out here. Now, but you know what? I don't want to confuse you. Don't do that because then you may divide everything by 6x. So this is what I would do. I'd show myself that I'm taking out a 3x so that way I don't confuse myself. 3x times 2, now that's 6x. I'm left with 2x squared plus uh, 4x minus 5. Okay? Now, is this a, a, a perfect square trinomial? No, there's not even a chance. Let's try to do this the Cuban method. So I got 6x, 2x, 2x, 2 times negative 5. My new C is negative 10. What times what is negative 10, but when added together is 4? Nothing. So it's 6x times 2x squared plus 4x minus, um, minus 5. And that's it. All I could do for that one was take out a GCF. No big deal. Sometimes you could do multiple steps. Sometimes you can't. Okay? Now, number three, the binomials. Is this a difference of squares? Yeah, what's the square root of the first term? 2y cubed plus the square root of the second term. Good. And then square root of the first term minus square root of the second term. Done. Done. Number four. I got 7x cubed plus 14x squared minus 21x. Can I factor anything out of here? What do I factor out? 7x. Very good. So I'm left with x squared plus 2x minus 3. Now, can I factor this? It's not a perfect square trinomial, but let's see if I can factor it. My setup is x and x. What times what is negative 3, but when added together is positive 2? That's positive 3 and a negative 1. Excellent, gentlemen. Excellent. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Well done. All right, next. Can I factor anything out of here? Oh, very good. A 2y. Very, very well done there. So we got x squared minus 10x plus 25. What does this kind of maybe familiar, what does this kind of remind you of? Look at the last term and the first term. Are they perfect squares? So can we test for them? Okay, so I got 2y. What's the square root of x squared? What's the square root of 25? What's 5 times 2 times x? So does it work? So put a minus here, squared. Now again, if you don't want to do that, which I don't know why you wouldn't, with easy numbers like this, you could still go the long way. You could have said 2y and then x and x. What times what is 25 when I have to get this negative 5? Put a negative 5, put a negative 5. And that equals the same thing as 2y, x minus 5 squared. Does that make sense? Okay. Last but not least, number six, 7x to the fifth, 21x to the fourth, minus 28x cubed. What can I do here? No, I can factor out more than x cubed. 7x cubed. Very, very well done. So that's x squared plus 3x um, minus 4. Hey, wait a second. This could be. Could this be a difference of squares? I mean, a perfect square trinomial? No. Perfect square trinomial will never have a negative at the end. It will either be plus plus or minus plus. So here you're just going to factor regularly. What times what is negative 4? But when I have to get this positive 3? Positive 4 and negative 1. Very good. Ding dong, the witch is gone, my friends. Awesome. Of course it was easy because you guys rule. Hope you learned a lot. Let's practice now.